Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to track four at 1300 hours. Sorry? You can't hear anything. Okay, now you can. All right, track four, 1300 hours. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this promises to be a riveting session, so. Okay, how's this? Uh, I would ask that at the end of the presentation that you don't come up to the front of the stage. I believe we're going to uh, Capri 114 for Q&A. Uh, this is Jonathan Lee and Neil Paul. Uh, go ahead, guys. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, smart card authentication and blocking debiting on stored value systems. I just Louder, that's good. Raise the mic, all right. First off, I want to say that uh, it's just a pleasure to be in front of everyone. It's our first time at DEF CON, so it'll be a little bit easy on us. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been pretty awesome so far. All right, okay. All right. all right, so let's get started. So who are we? Uh, I'm Jonathan Lee. I'm a computer engineering student at UBC in Vancouver. Uh, my interests are electronics and embedded systems. Uh, I'm Neil. I'm also a UBC uh, graduate out of Vancouver, uh, but I'm from an electrical engineering background. A uh, recent graduate and looking for work, if anyone could do anything about that. <laughs> so just first off, before, uh, just to set off your expectations here, we're going to have a quick disclaimer. Um, we're not exactly security professionals. We're university students and graduates, um, so I'm not uh, lead code breaking hackers here. Um, we didn't exactly um, break any uh, encryption schemes or crack those, but uh, we'll show that with our limited uh, security knowledge, uh, we were able to compromise uh, what was thought to be a secure system. So what do we know about security? We just took a brief uh, intro to computer security class. Uh, just some basic fundamentals um, with uh, some basic cryptography, authentication protocols, and all that. Just a bit of that stuff. So our motivation for this project, uh, basically for our class we had to do a term project which was a security analysis on some sort of secure system. Um, we thought it just an opportunity to try out some cool hacks. Uh, I know John was a resident at UBC so he had a good eye on, uh, it was beneficial to him to get uh, access to this system. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. So why should you care about our hack? Well, we all know anyone out there who is security professionals know that companies spend a lot of money and time to secure their systems. And uh, basically, um, for this system, it has a lot of uh, secure security features um, that they advertise. And basically, if you're able to get around those, then they don't mean much and it's a lot of waste of time. So just a bit of history on uh, some of the smart card hacks that have been done previously. Actually, uh, these two presentations were done at DEF CON before. And uh, they really emphasize the need for authentication and encryption on these communications and these transactions. Uh, Joe Grant did uh, an analysis on the San Francisco parking meter system. And uh, Strom Carlson did an analysis on the FedEx Kinko card. Uh, both of them were vulnerable to re replay attacks. So if they were just able to record, uh, especially with the, the FedEx card, um, if they're just able to record the password, um, they could get into the card and do whatever they want, write a new value. Um, it was pretty insecure. So they're, you know, they, they really emphasize the need for authentication on the uh, communications. So this is the target system, um, just a smart card laundry system, um, a stored value system, that's, that's what's important here. Um, it could be uh, anything really, but the one that we had access to was a, a laundry system. So uh, some of the early efforts, we were thinking of um, just trying some of the usual tags. We didn't really know which chip uh, was on the card yet. We didn't know what, uh, anything about it really. We were thinking, you know, could we just simply read and modify the contents of the card without anything? Or did we have to sniff, uh, sniff uh, some read or write passwords? Or, you know, could we perform any replay attacks? Um, so, yeah, we, we started off thinking about those. And, and uh, in, our, in our early investigations, we uh, we did some Google searches and we found a blog of someone who actually looked at the same system. And uh, there, th his success was limited to just reading the configura uh, configuration memory off of the card. And I uh, will tell you what that is in a second. 
And we also weren't sure if that was a card that, that we had either. Uh, we just assumed that it was the same one. So we were la later able to identify the, the card as uh, Atmel Crypto Memory based on the ATR that you see here. Um, there's a block diagram here of uh, what the chip looked like, uh, looks like underneath. Uh, probably something to note is the authentication and encryption engine that you see in the top middle block. Uh, some of the security features of this chip, uh, after looking at the data sheet, we've noticed that uh, we had a, it had 64-bit mutual authentication protocol, um, encrypted checksums on, on every uh, message containing data, and encrypted those checksums using stream encryption, and it had a bunch of other stuff that wasn't really relevant to this talk. Um, so on top of those things, when we looked through the data sheet, we found out that uh, it does run under, it has three capable uh, security modes which it runs under. Um, standard password uh, mode and also authentication mode and then it can enter uh, in encryption mode as well. So uh, the default mode is just the standard password mode uh, where any configuration data, user data and passwords are all sent in the clear and then uh, on top of that if it wanted to enter authentication and encryption modes it had to uh, perform the authentication sequences and the proper commands for that. So we decided to take a look at how our card was configured. Um, since the configuration memory is, uh, is sent in the clear, we don't need any uh, special permissions to read it. And I should also make the distinction between configuration memory and, and user zone memory. Uh, configuration memory just tells us how the card's configured, whereas the user zone memory is separate and contains like the values, uh, history, things like that. So uh, I just got a simple USB uh, smart card reader uh, off of eBay, and then uh, using the smart card uh, smart card IO uh, Java library, I just quickly wrote something to uh, to dump the configuration memory. Yeah, at this point we didn't actually confirm it as well, so another try we would have just tried to read from the user zones and then try to rewrite new values. Um, his program allowed us to uh, dump the configuration memory here. Um, so just taking a look at it and uh, we're going to interpret this. In the first row it just says the address is where the, uh, the configuration memory starts. And then uh, at the end uh, you show, it shows the status of our read command. So 9000 just says that that memory, access, memory is accessible. And then uh, 6900 just shows that that memory uh, we didn't have any access to. Um, just taking a look at some important uh, memory values there. The, the data configuration register. Um, the bitwise value of it is just shown there. And what we learned from that is that only four authentication attempts are allowed on this card. Um, authentication attempts counter was enabled, so, so we do have to worry about that. Uh, other, other important registers are just the access registers. Um, the bitwise data shows to be there. And what we learned from that is that Encryption isn't necessarily uh, necessary for this card or system. And then uh, also, it's not using any read or write passwords. But what we did find out was that uh, the authentication, is authentication mode is required to read from the right, uh, user zones. So just summing that up, uh, what we learned here is that uh, we weren't able to do any kind of brute force uh, uh, key cracking because um, the, uh, the counter is enabled. Also, uh, because there's no encryption, we thought maybe we would be able to sniff some passwords, but it turns out they're not even using passwords, so we won't even be able to sniff them. <laughs> and then finally, we just we found out uh, the most daunting information was that it actually uh, requires an authentication. So if we recall the security modes, it's in the authentication mode. Uh, that shows that user data is, is uh, shown in the clear as it's transmitted, but then the passwords are encrypted, which we don't need again. And uh, what's most important is that after it sends data, it uses a, a MAC code, MAC value, to check the integrity of the data and make sure that it came from the proper source. Um, so we learned from that that uh, basically that ruled out any replay attacks because every every session will be different than the previous. So yeah, so that kind of sums up our early findings and, and we kind of hit a brick wall here. We weren't really sure what to do. Uh, there were six weeks left in our, in our project and uh, we, we didn't have the time or the expertise really to do a proper crypto analysis of the authentication protocol. 
So we we were kind of took a step back and, and thought about um, our approach. Uh, the whole time we were thinking about how can we modify the contents of the card? Uh, how can we hack the card? But really we didn't think about the entire system working together. So we started thinking about, okay, well, what about the machine? Our goal here is to just get free laundry. So <laughs> screw, screw the card. What about, what about the machine? Uh, is there any vulnerabilities there? And then maybe then the communications between the card and the machine. So, uh, so we, you know, we try to come up with a, a logical hypothesis of the state machine of, of the laundry machine and uh, how the communication flows. So if maybe if I were a lazy programmer, um, this might be one way to do it. Uh, simply uh, on the host side, so the machine side, just uh, initiate the authentication procedure. And after that's finished and everything's, each side is verified, um, just read the value off of the card, wait for the user to hit the start button, and then write the new data onto the card, uh, the, the lower data, the lesser data, which means that you just debited the card. Um, we thought this was a bit of a long shot, um, that they actually impl implemented it like this, but uh, we decided to take a look. So, you know, if, if, if it were implemented like this, there might be uh, an opportunity for a man in the middle attack right here. So just, you know, uh, if you don't know what a man in the middle attack is, it's just having an entity in between two parties that want to communicate and uh, this entity can intercept uh, communications going both ways and possibly modify the communications for its own purposes. And we were wondering if we could apply this in hardware as well. Uh, but before we, you know, did anything else, we actually had to look at the communications between the, the machine and the card. So uh, I'll let Neil talk about that. And this is where things got a little bit interesting. Um, we all had to get a, a sniffing. We had to uh, start sniffing. And if you can imagine us sitting in the middle of our dorm room uh, holding a laptop connected to all these wires into the laundry machine, um, yeah. It drew a little yeah, bit of attention to anyone trying to do their laundry, and uh, yeah, we got some interesting looks. Uh, we ended up doing but, a lot. But of late a, a lot of people just didn't even care either. Like they just <laughs> they didn't even look at us. They just went in there and did their laundry and left, and we just kind of were just sitting there sniffing communications. So the first thing we needed was just a prepared uh, smart card, where uh, other 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 people have tried uh, using a shim and all that kind of stuff, and uh, we thought the easiest way is just some copper tape, and then uh, solder to the contacts there would uh, allow us to have access to the, the, the pins which we needed. We also were able to purchase uh, a, logic, a USB logic analyzer. We just found that online and uh, that was about $200. Yeah, it was about $200 and uh, that's a Saley logic, uh, USB logic analyzer. It was really crucial for our project and also debugging our, our hardware that we'll show you later. All right, uh, so basically the communication went on their uh, 9600 baud it was a byte by byte uh, data transmission in the form of uh, eight data bits, even parity, and uh, one stop bit. And then um, to form a command, just a group of bytes would be sent along the, the line. So let's just take a look at the communication flow. As soon as you put in the, the card into the machine, um, the first thing that happens is that the card sends out its answer to reset, where it shows its, uh, which card it is for the machine. The machine then reads the 8-bit cryptogram and 7-byte eight eight byte, byte cryptogram. Eight byte. So cryptogram and 7-byte ID. Two bytes. And then uh, it uses this cryptogram to compute a challenge value, which it then sends along with a random number. It's pretty much just the, the textbook um, mutual authentication protocol which it carries out here. And then uh, finally it reads the new cryptogram from the card, which the card generates from those to verify that um, it is the the proper card. The machine then proceeds to read from the user zones. Um, after the user presses the start button on the laundry machine, we found out that it, it reads from the user zones and then it uh, writes newly decremented value to the, to the card. Using three separate write commands. Just note here that every read and write command uh, follows with a checksum to verify that the data was only sent by the right. proper and, and parties. And that would be the, the MAC that uh, Neil was talking about earlier, the MAC, message authentication, something like that, or anyways, but it was, it's an encrypted checksum. So just taking a closer look at the final write commands, we'll see here on our picture, that comes out, that uh, the first thing that's sent is a five, five character command, which shows us the instruction, uh, the instruction code, the address, where it wants to head, and also